Hi, I'm Andrew, and welcome to the Neon Knitter. So, today I went to the St. Cloud Spin Fest at the Rocking Horse Farm in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And so, I'm going to take you along with me, and I'm going to show you all the vendors at that festival that I went to today. Now, before I show you the footage I took, I'm just going to mention... This is not what I wore at the festival. I wore my color craving at the festival today. And I went with a couple other people to the festival. And um, uh, it was like 90 degrees today. And we walked around some parks in St. Cloud afterwards. Um, Keeping in mind that St. Cloud is like an hour away from where I live, because I live in St. Paul, so, and, so when we walked around those parks, I left my shawl in the car, because I was hot, it was a warm one today, so, yeah, I was wearing my color craving, uh, but yeah, then I went to another um, little thing later this evening, and so I wanted to show off my new zebra shirt, so I switched into this, and I was too lazy to throw it wear on for this video. So, yeah, I found this at Ragstock. Um, so it's vintage, it's probably older than I am, specifically the Ragstock at Mall of America, so yeah. But without further ado, I will show you my footage of the St. Cloud Spin Fest. The first vendor is Terry's Black Sheep. She sells some finished crochet items as well as some roving for spinning. Next is the Lazy Farmer. She sells yarn as well as roving. Next is Get Bent's Farm. They sell roving as well as yarn. Next is Allian Yarns, and she sells her hand-dyed yarns. Up next is Greenstone Fiber Arts. They sell one-of-a-kind hand-dyed yarns. No two are alike and they also sell hand-dyed roving. I actually purchased from them at Shepherd's Harvest in 2022. Next is Kasha's Knits. She is selling her hand-dyed yarns. Quirky Fiberworks is selling their hand-dyed yarn, as well as roving and hand-spun novelty yarn. Up next is Mode Knit Yarn. They are selling their hand-dyed yarns and I actually purchased from them today. E2's 
Emu Ranch is selling fiber, yarn, and wool items. From U to U is selling their hand dyed yarns. They had a display set up with $1 balls of yarn. I think a lot of it was like acrylics and um, synthetic fibers. And a lot of it was partial balls. And they had some books for sale for a dollar each. Then they had some $5 cones and just some other things. I forgot the name of this booth and can't find it in my footage, but there's some roving and some handmade items for sale here. Crimson Sunrise Farm has some already finished woolen items as well as some yarn for sale. Wooly Wooly Creations has some felted handmade woolen items for sale. Rocking Horse Farm does also have their own yarn shop open year round. So we start with a little display from Allen and Yarns, and then around the corner here is a little display of Malabrigo. You will notice as I go throughout the store that they have a lot of cones. So they sell a lot of yarn in bulk here. So there's a lot of cones. Most of them are acrylics and cottons, but they have some wool cones as well. They also do have a fairly large selection of knitting books and magazines.
They do also have a really nice selection of commercial sock yarn. Last display is all their hand dyed yarns that they carry. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I purchased at the festival. So I'm going to start with the things that I intended to shop for while I was there. And then I will get into my one unplanned purchase. So you guys might remember that at Shepherd's Harvest, I purchased this skein here from Yarn Hero. This is Yarn Hero Color Mix Sock in the colorway Toy Box. And I bought this from the Yarn Adventures Yarn Truck at Shepherd's Harvest. Um, if you haven't watched my Shepherd's Harvest video, go watch it when you're done watching this. But um, you guys might remember that this is my contrast color for the Slippy V Sweater by Stephen West. Anyway, so I bought my main color to go with it. And it is this... So this is a big, huge cone of brown sheep nature spun fingering, and the color is called baked bean. So I think these go really nice together. And this has over 2,000 yards on it. It's a whole pound of yarn, over 2,000 yards of a fingering weight, 100% wool. And I hope you guys can read the uh, information here and if you're unable to read that information I will insert a picture I took for my Ravelry stash page and I will put that on the screen so you can read that but yeah I think that is going to be really nice and I should have leftover after I'm done knitting my sweater so yeah I think these are going to go really nice together for the Slippy V sweater by Stephen West And this entire cone, over 2,000 yards, is, I only paid $50 for this. And this is the equivalent of like eight or nine 400 yards gain of sock yarn. So I think I got a really good deal for this. And also, who can go wrong with a yarn called Baked Bean? I mean, I think that's a really cool color name, Baked Bean. So, yeah. Then the other pattern I intended to shop for was, so I've had this yarn in my stash for a while now. This is Earth Yarn's Unique Sock in the 2021 Pantone colorway. So evidently I've had it in my stash for a while because it's from 2021 and it is now 2023. Um, but it's gray and yellow. It's supposed to make socks like this. But I don't want to make socks out of it. So, um, a couple weeks ago, I went to the library because I happened to be waiting for the bus and the library was on the same corner and the bus wasn't going to show up for 15 minutes yet. So I set myself a 10 minute timer went into the library quick to look at knitting books. Okay, long story short, the library closest to my house um, is closing and being torn down and they're gonna build a new building there. So, still gonna be a library there. They're just gonna tear it down and build a new one in the same spot. Um, which is kind of sad to see an old historic building go, but they're trying to meet the needs of the community and have it be more accessible to people so yeah and so i popped in there quick to look at knitting books uh and that was the last time i ever went before it closed because at the filming of this video it is already closed so um it closed on may 28th so yeah but i checked out Knit Happy with Self-Striping Yarns by Stephanie Loveton of Tilly Bean Knits. 
And basically this book is all about, you have that beautiful self-striping yarn, but you don't want to knit socks out of it. What else can you knit out of it? And still show off those stripes and not have it look weird. So, um, so here is the pattern that I decided to do. This is the Bright Axis T, of course, by Stephanie Lovkin. And obviously, you need a solid main color and then a self striping contrast up there at the top. I've never made myself a summer t shirt before, but I'm, I do see a couple of those being in my future. Um, but yeah, it's the Bright Axis T. So, and that's just my receipt with the due date as a bookmark, so. Um, but yeah, so I decided I was going to shop for my solid contrast color to go with it. And here, I'll take one of these cakes out of the box to show you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. So the idea of Earth Unique Sock is that there's two little tiny cakes of yarn that make identical matching socks. So, but yeah, so this has got a light gray and then a yellow. So I decided to pair it with a dark gray. And so this is what I bought from Mode Knit Yarn. This is Mode Knit Yarn, Mode Work Fingering in the colorway Coal. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, it's called coal. And I got two skeins, because that's what I need. And yeah, I think that's going to be really nice. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be super beautiful. And I'm looking forward to knitting my first summer top because all my sweaters to this point are all lawn sleeve and very much meant to be worn in the winter. So it'll be nice to have knits I can wear in the summer. Then <clears throat> here is my one unplanned purchase. Oh, by the way, I got this cone in their knit shop. So I didn't buy it from one of the vendors at all. This last purchase I also got from their knit shop and not from any of the vendors. Um, I saw this yarn and I absolutely had to have it. It was so beautiful. And so when I got home, I browsed patterns, but they only had two skeins and I knew it was enough to knit a summer top. Now the colors don't scream summer, the colors scream autumn, but I can still make a short sleeve summer top out of it, it's fine. If they'd have had any more, maybe I'd have made a sweater out of it or something, but it's all they had. Um, and it's from a company that went out of business, so. But here it is. Um. This is Hand Painted Knitting Yarns, or HPKY for short, but Hand Painted Knitting Yarns. This is their Merino Nylon Superwash Sock, and the color is called Ada. It is 75% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon, 435 yards, 120 grams. So I got two skeins, because that's what they had. And there will never be any more of this, because hand-painted knitting yarns went out of business several years ago. I don't know how many years ago, but... Had nothing to do with the pandemic. They went out of business. Oh, maybe. I don't know. But I know they were out of business several years before the pandemic I don't know but anyway so yeah had to have that these are totally my colors 
Love it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, when I was browsing patterns on Ravelry, I think I've I'm not 100% sure, because if I find a better pattern before I cast on, then obviously I will knit the pattern I like better, but I think I'm going to be making the Monica Geller T by, sorry, Northland. This is kind of exciting, because I've never done a sorry Northland pattern before. So, yeah. So that'll be exciting to do a sorry Northland. So... Monica Geller T by Sorry Nordland. I think we'll showcase this quite nicely with it being a very plain sweater, but it being short sleeve and fingering weight. But yeah, so that is all that I bought at the um, Fiber Fair today. And yeah, I have some other recent acquisitions that I will show off in my next podcast episode. And my next podcast episode will be coming out soon. I'm just waiting on one more yarn purchase to arrive in the mail. So, yeah. And then the next uh, fiber fair I go to will not be until September. I don't know if I mentioned before in any videos that I was planning on going to five fiber fairs this year. Um, but one of the ones I was planning on going to actually got canceled. It was Stitches Boutique, which was supposed to be in August. Um, it is the same company behind Stitches Midwest, which I've never been to, because um, Stitches Midwest is not in Minnesota. so. The sad thing is the company behind Stitches Midwest and Stitches Boutique and all of the Stitches events sadly filed for bankruptcy and went out of business. So Stitches Midwest is no longer going to be happening anymore. And that's very sad. So that means Stitches Boutique is also not happening anymore. So yeah. So the Fiber Fair I was planning on going to in August got canceled. Um, so yeah, so there's not going to be another Fiber Fair till September when I go to Yarn Over in Plymouth, Minnesota. So it's, I think it's in Plymouth, but anyways. So I'm Andrew. Thank you for checking in here at the Neon Knitter, and I will see you in my next podcast episode.